The time has come for the Cobra to rise up and reveal himself. Welcome back to AP Economics, presented by Buddynomics. Your maestros of money, Professor Jasper and Professor Pikachu here. And today we have an exciting lesson about bonds. So today we are going to take a look at bonds and how it relates to monetary policy. So I've got two parts of the lesson. First, we're going to take a look at bonds as a financial asset. And as investor Warren Buffett says, bonds will not create wealth, but they will preserve wealth. And they should be a part of every person's financial portfolio. So a bond is an asset, and a bond is composed of two parts that derive the asset's value. One is the actual dollar value of the bond, the principal amount of the bond. And the most important part of the bond is its interest rate. And really important to note, it is always, always, especially for the AP test, always assume that the bond, as most bonds are, are is a fixed interest rate. And this interest rate appears, can be one of two things. It can either be a yearly compounded interest rate, so that means if you have a bond for $100 at 5%, the first year it is $105, and then the next year it is 5% of $105. So compounded means that the interest keeps adding on top of the new value created by the interest. Or some bonds are known as income bonds and have what is called a coupon rate. And if it's a $100 bond at 5%, that means every year for every bond you own, you have the bond sits there in value, the principal sits there in value, but that bond generates a yearly income. So every year you would receive, it's a, if it's a $100 bond at 5%, that means every year you receive $5 per bond. So let's take a look at how bonds are generated because they are generated a little differently than stocks. Bonds are an IOU. They are a loan from you. So in the primary bond market where people purchase bonds, they are a loan from you. You give either the money to the government, it could be your local municipality, your city, state, or even federal government, or it could be a business, a corporate bond. And in return for loaning them money, you receive a bond in cities and states and corporations and governments issue bonds all of the time. It's a way to generate money. The government or corporation benefits immediately. They have an immediate injection of cash. And then, eventually, when the bond matures, which will be years later down the line, you can return, you can give, you can cash that bond back to them when the bond matures and then receive your money back. If it is a bond with a compounded interest rate, you receive that principal back with however many years it took to mature. And the thing about bonds as a financial asset is you cannot return it to the government or the corporation without, you cannot sell it back to them until what is called the maturity date. But let's say you need a, and if it's a coupon bond, if it's a coupon rate bond, well then you really just have, you've just used your money to generate a second source of income. This is very good to do towards building towards retirement. You slowly build, uh, build up your collection of bonds and each bond generates a yearly income for itself. And then when you get to retire, you have, your, you have an additional yearly income for yourself. And that bond is yours until you return it back. And you can choose not to, um, not to uh, return the bond back when it matures and just hold on to the bond and either let the bond build up in, in its compounded value or just sit back and collect income from the bond. So everybody benefits with the creation of bonds. For the business or government, they are getting that immediate injection of cash and you have now created a nice little financial asset for yourself. So when you buy a bond for yourself, like Warren Buffett says, 
You, it does not have the high ceiling that a stock has. It's not going to double your wealth. It's not going to make you wealthy. But what a bond does is it preserves that wealth. And one of the two ways we just said, right? You give, you give the government or business money, and in exchange, you have that bond. You hold on to that bond for its maturity, and when that bond matures, and bonds take a long time to mature. That's why a government or a corporation doesn't mind um, generating them, because by the time by the time they mature, they've hopefully used that money uh, to a good purpose and now are profitable to the point where they can pay the bond back. And so you have your bond, and the most important thing about the bond is not, is not its value, but that compounded interest, so you have now, you're now slowly building your wealth, probably at a rate, again, much greater than a savings account, always thinking about fighting inflation, growing your money at a rate faster than the inflation rate or generating an additional yearly income for yourself on top of your retirement. So bonds, very important financial assets. But what if you don't want to wait for your bond to mature? Well, this is the secondary bond market. And the secondary bond market that works like the stock market, which you find another person and that person, and you have to buy, you could sell your bond to that person. So here you have a bond, you don't want to wait for that bond to mature, and so you want to get a cash value for your bond. So this person likes your bond, gives you money for it, and you give the person the bond. And now, what gives the bond its value, just like in the primary market, as in the secondary market, is that interest rate. The interest rate, that fixed rate, represents the true value of the bond. Yes, the dollar value is important, but the real value of the bond is either the interest that's going to slowly build or the income it will create. So whenever you see bonds in the AP test, the true value of the bond is the interest rate, that fixed interest rate. And that interest rate also represents the risk of the bond. Bonds are rated uh, our bonds are rated uh, from an AAA all the way down, and high risk equals a lower rating, but it also equals a higher interest rate as, a, as an indicator of that risk, and not just as an indicator of it, but also an enticement for you to take that risk. That, and maybe it's a new company that needs to generate. So this is not your standard blue chip company. This is not the, the US government or a state government because those are, those are secure financial institutions. And they would have a lower risk and therefore a lower interest rate. So government bonds tend to have lower interest rate than, than corporate bonds. So they would have a lower interest rate like an AAA or AA uh, rating. And uh, the more risky bonds, the bonds that are based on companies with a less reliable track record or less reliable income, uh, corporate profits, would have a higher interest rate. So in the secondary market, the interest rate represents the real, that true value of the bond. And additionally, the higher the interest rate is associated with the higher the risk and the lower the interest rate, the lower the risk. Now, let's bring in monetary policy, because what does monetary policy do? Monetary policy changes the nominal interest rate. So, when new bonds are created, they will be based off the new nominal interest rate from the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. Remember, the Federal Reserve can either increase the money supply, which lowers the nominal interest rate, or it can decrease the money supply, which raises the nominal interest rate. So monetary policy will change the value of all, the true value of all the previous bonds because they will be compared against, so these bonds are already issued. However, their resale value in the secondary market is going to change because the new bonds will now have a new interest rate from the monetary policy. So, let's say you have a bond 
that is 5%. You have a 5% bond. And the Federal Reserve has just done an expansionary monetary policy. So now and that means there will be a lower nominal interest rate. So there's a new monetary policy, and that lowers the interest rate to 3%. So now, if a new bond is created, that new bond will be based off the lower nominal interest rate, which means comparatively, this person's bond, even though their bond value is fixed, technically, if they wanted to sell their bond, now they could have a higher asking price for their bond. And this is always a question as a multiple choice or free response. If the Federal Reserve does a monetary policy, how will it change the price of bonds? And the trick to this question is that it doesn't say previously issued bonds, but that is what is implied in the question. So whenever you see a question about the changing of bond values based on the, a change of monetary policy, it's always referencing those previously issued bonds. So now we have a new lower nominal interest rate. Let's say the nominal interest rate went down to 3% after the expansionary monetary policy. Your bond value didn't change in price, but now this person who wants to buy a bond, your 5% bond is now going to be more attractive than the new 3% bonds that are going to be issued. So this person, so now you could ask more of this person to buy your bond. The actual dollar value of your bond didn't change, but the asking price of your bond changed because the comparative nominal interest rate went down. So even though the bond's interest rate stayed the same, it is now comparatively higher than any new bonds that will be issued. Inversely, let's say the Federal Reserve does a contractionary monetary policy. Remember, a contractionary monetary policy will increase the interest rate. So let's say the interest rate will go from 3 to Let's say, let's say it goes from 5 to 6%. So now, this is bad for people who want to sell bonds on the secondary market because this person who's looking to buy a bond will now just wait for the new bonds to be issued at a higher interest rate. So again, even though the actual dollar value of the bond and the interest rate of the bond did not change, technically, the value of the bond changed because you are now going to be able to ask less for this bond selling it in the secondary market than you would have because this person would now rather buy a bond at a higher interest rate than buy your bonds at 5%. So if you wanted to sell a bond to get out of the, to just get some cash and not wait for the bond to mature, the, technically the value of your bond the true value of your bond has decreased even though the value remained this even though the interest rate remained the same because the new interest rate is higher your interest rate is comparatively lower so your asking price is now also going to be less if you want to unload this bond in the secondary market so again so we see how macroeconomic changes can affect personal finance. And again, bonds are excellent uh, financial investments. Always be aware of the risk of bonds and remember that they will not um, generate wealth, but they will, they will, they won't make you wealthy, but they will preserve wealth. And always do your research and if you need a financial advisor to ask one as well, because the bond market, as you guys can see, is very complicated. We'll see you next time. Remember, whether it is your money, your mind, or your body, invest hard, invest often, and no feelings. Money never sleeps. We'll see you next time.